In spite of several interventions to reduce child labor and eliminate its worst forms, local communities that are usually poor literally push children into child labor. Prevailing cultural and economic circumstances may have kept the children working and risking their health, education, and well-being. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the International Labor Organization Convention 182, and the Children's Act of Ghana are key international and national conventions and legislative frameworks that seek to protect children from economic abuse and help eliminate the worst forms of child labor. At Audible Chrome, the situation on child labor, according to some community members, have improved, yet there is still more work to be done. Some of the children pluck coconuts for sale, whilst others assist their parents on the farm, according to some inhabitants, sometimes during school hours. Audible Chrome has several development challenges. The community relies on water from a nearby stream during the rainy season and has to rely on a river that is almost two hours of walk away because the nearby stream dries up in the dry season. After all the hard work, the Keteke team retires to the Ogwa Hall for the day's evaluation and planning for the following day. The teaching and counseling team continue their work. They take their pupils through some basic lessons. The team brought sacks and pieces of cloth and a cobbler's needle to creatively design doormats. Make uh, carpets, like uh, doormats. Okay, the normal doormats. And we had to we had to use a resource that if we are no more here, they could easily get. So we use sack, cocoa sack, which I'm sure they should have here. And then pieces of old material, cats, just putting them through and then tying them like a knot. There's no much work. So later they can do it and then sell or they can do it and use in their homes. In the meantime, Obusian Peni Mensa, a cocoa farmer and an opinion leader, speaks on the sanitation situation in Otsubo Krum. Hakram <laughs> On a health-related subject, the team meets a traditional birth attendant who explains how they handle health emergencies. The team turns to a young man who narrates how life is without electricity. Electricity as a whole So we need lighter. You will find it difficult. Say normal lantern and then also the rate of uh, carries in our tunnel and also uh, very expensive. Right now the fuel prices are being placed in Ghana in general so expensive. Now if you are the uh, hospital, hospital I'm not being here, 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 i Computer. 
Then with that electricity, you can't use a computer. You can't use a computer. I came in yesterday. I realized these kids or these children don't have any knowledge about their country and some similar, the basic things that the country is doing for them. So I start by letting them know because I realize they are having their main farming here is with cocoa, and they don't know even the one who brought cocoa to Ghana. So I started with that, letting them know the one who brought cocoa to Ghana. And today I'm trying to help them how to recite a poem with the title Ghana. The poem goes by Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Ghana is my country. And they are trying to pick it up. I'm really grateful because they don't know us, they don't know me, but they are trying to cope with me and they are trying very hard. It's necessary we teach them numbers and then alphabets because that's the basis for their learning. It's where the learning all begins, you understand. But then you realize in teaching these ones from preschool up to like class four, we need a balance. They need to really understand what they are learning. So we do it 80% in the local language and then 20% in English. So there's a balance. But then we really need them to understand. That's why we do it 80%. Then from class four to maybe class six, you do it 50-50, English, local language. And then in Jesus, you can go with English.